You're watching a Nova video podcast. There's certain areas in the Bering Sea we call hot spots. There's areas where you get a congregation of animals. We see congregations of clams, and then there's congregations of walruses that are going after them. Over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, we've been seeing major declines in the food, the prey, which are the clams, the worms on the bottom, particularly the clams that are the food for these diving threatened sea ducks, the spectacled eider. But they're also a major food supply for uh, walruses. The Healy scientists can be certain about this decline in the food chain because every year they've taken samples in the exact same locations. At each research station, they check the chemistry and biology of the ice, the seawater, and the benthic layer, what most of us call the ocean floor. I got it. Yeah. Put your, put your hands on the bottom. Over the years, we've had cruises anywhere from March through October. We can go up another few centimeters. We work 24-7, which means for 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have teams that are always working. Right now we're in the northern Bering Sea, uh, between Alaska and Russia. It's the area where we do a bottom sampling, so we're sampling for mud, uh, animals at the bottom of the ocean. We are out on the deck and we use a grab, which is a mud sampler, it's like a clam dredge, and we get a certain area of the mud, and we grab it, bring it up. We open that jaw, and we drop out the mud and spray it out. And bring it over to a sieve, and we use a certain size sieve for, you know, opening like you would strain spaghetti. And then we strain out the mud and keep the animals. always interesting because you never know what you bring up with a grab. Um, maybe there's something special in there and maybe it looks like the other stations. I mainly look for those organisms who feed on the ice algae, copper pods and krill for example, and see if the isotopes from their tissue tell me what kind of food source they, they have. You can see a lot of uh, shells of uh, bivalves, a lot of species of polychids, and uh, what else? Uh, ah, this is a big, big polychaetes uh, and aftis. Very nice and very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> For walruses, maybe. Walruses have eaten well from the Bering Sea, and so have we. The Bering is the world's most productive commercial fishery and has been for over a century. The world has consumed millions of tons of its herring and cod, and an astounding amount of that most dangerous catch, crab. Most recently, the principal catch has been the main ingredient in the ubiquitous fast food fish fillet, pollock. But can the Bering continue to offer such fishy bounty forever? The Bering Sea is warming. What we're trying to do is to understand how this system, which is shallow, it's vulnerable, how it's going to respond and change, what's going to happen here in Dutch Harbor, which is a big fishing port. Uh, there's some impacts on the economy here. There's some impacts further north where we're going. The people that live there depend upon uh, the Bering Sea as a food resource, and uh, they're very concerned about climate change and what impact that's going to have on the organisms that they hunt, uh, walrus or bowhead whale, uh, uh, bearded seal, so forth. Our main concern is that, um, that, that our ice condition is losing its uh, thickness, its density through the years. As you can see, if, you, if, if, you, if the camera can see also, the far end of the water here with that ice, you, you can see how thin it is actually. From an ecosystem perspective, the Bering Sea and the Chukchi Sea are very rich habitats for animals feeding on the benthos, like the grey whale or like the walrus. And this is largely due to the impact of the sea ice. Seasonal melt produces a huge phytoplankton plume, 
and that sinks all to the seafloor and the animals at the seafloor use it and they are the food then for the walrus and for the gray whale. Now there is, there is the concept around that if we remove the sea ice too early then that bloom of phytoplankton that happens in the water might be consumed totally in the water column and might not reach the seafloor. And so that would mean that all these benthic feeders like the walrus and the gray whale might run out of food. Implications that are currently discussed for biologists are, are really reaching pretty far from extinction of species to entire ecosystem changes. And for many regions in the Arctic, we just don't have any idea about the current status and the current situation.